Good. Cowabunga, buddy. Cowabunga. <laughs> this looks like a fun table. It is. Yeah. Hi. Oh, this is the party? This is the party table. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's funny because, like you said, there is no mask yet. Yet. Yeah. Mask is coming. Oh, here we uh, go. But it's not exactly the scariest <laughs> name, you know? It's not like the executioner. Michael <laughs> Chiklis as it's, the executioner. It's like the Riddler. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. And I would love, uh, no one would love a musical episode more than me. And here's, here's a secret. I, she's not going to like that, I'm telling you this. No one would enjoy it more than oh, you? No. Okay, maybe Corey would enjoy it. Because let me tell you, it. the two of us can, yeah. can, can like slam out a duet Some karaoke. Out of karaoke. Well, and yeah, your character is like wrestling with quite a few things this season. And I'm not talking about with his best friend Jerome. I'm talking about his feelings with Selena Kyle. Okay. So are we finally going to see some action between you two? So you're kind of a... You're going to be the new badass this season, so... You. You're the badass. <laughs> you're the badass. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous being around you because you're so good. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Tabitha and Barbara are being labeled as the new Thelma and Louise. Oh, they are? are? We, do you think we're seeing going That's to that awesome. di direction? Uh, um, have you met any of the other franchise actors from the Batman movies, like Michelle Pfeiffer? One that rhymes with Nalfred. <laughs> so Batman is typically the main character. Yeah, you damn Skippy. I find I, it yeah, creepy. I do find smart people very scary, actually. Well, you must be yeah. terrified of me, darling. I am. I am. You, you're, you give me a lot of PTSDs, just so you know. I loved that storyline because it, it showed a part of Selena that she doesn't show people often because she she doesn't like showing vulnerability and she is genuinely such a sensitive person but she's had to learn the hard way that you living in a place like Gotham you can't be vulnerable because people take vulnerability as weakness and because of that her heartbreak the second heartbreak not only her it's not even a heartbreak because her mother broke her heart before and then she came back into her life and then broke her heart again for money and it tears Selena apart and that's kind of the breaking point where she says you know what I'm not going to depend on anybody I'm not going to rely on anybody I have to solely trust myself and I think she forgot about that for a little while, especially with her relationship with Bruce going. She forgot that she has to only trust herself. And the, the situation with her mother definitely reminds her of that. think so. I don't think she's open to understanding his point of view. <laughs> you know, once a woman sets her mind, she's set. And especially for Selena, 
the fact that he persuaded her into starting a relationship with her mother and then didn't tell her, oh, you were right, your mother is using you, that's messed up. So I think at least for the time being, she's saying, screw you, Bruce, you did me wrong. There, we all know that their relationship in the comics is so crazy and toxic and wild beyond anything, but yeah, she's, she's, she's like, boy, bye. <laughs> Tell him, boy, bye. <laughs> yeah. With your background in dance and all that, how did you use that to incorporate and kind of embody uh, Selena and kind of make it part of your character and how your character moves and how your character grows? I I think it, it came naturally because I I'm not I don't consider myself a very outgoing person. I consider myself an introvert. I'm not sh as shy as I was before, but I do consider myself an introvert. So I communicate much easier with my body and with the writing. The writing is so good that I just allowed what came naturally, I guess. And the fact that I am a dancer and that I was a, that I am able to pull that off, it's makes my job easier. But I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Did I answer your question? You did. Okay, cool. I some I rant a lot. So. Okay, cool. I some I rant a lot, so I have to no, work okay, on it. Um, have you met any of the other franchise actors from the Batman movies, like Michelle Pfeiffer? I've never gotten to meet okay. Michelle Pfeiffer, but I have gotten to meet Lee Merriweather and okay. Julie Newmar. And, oh, okay, so the story behind Julie Newmar. I was on my first talk show. It was Home and Family on Hallmark. Okay, yeah. And, and it was my 16th birthday. I was either coming up or had just happened. And they, they did this, they were doing this trivia, and I had to figure out this voice. And she, this voice said something, and I was like, who's that Eartha Kitten at the time? I, I, I didn't know that it was a live person, so I said Eartha Kitten. They're like, no. And, and oh. then Julie Newmar came out, and I was like, oh, my God. I remember that episode. <laughs> yes, I, I was so, I, I was about to cry. That's how excited I was, because she was the first Catwoman, the very first Catwoman. So, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. <laughs> and also a very adult relationship. Yeah. So, um, how did you as actors and directors work with you to sort of dial that back into something age-appropriate while still um, having that sort of spark and back in the home that we know that they have? Right. Their chemistry comes naturally, for sure. The, as far as the making it age-appropriate, the writers definitely helped with that in that they made it less of a foreshadowment, this foreshadowing towards what they will become and more of this teenage love affair of not really understanding the feelings that they feel or, under, or you know, not really understanding why they feel the way that they feel. And that definitely made it easier because that I could understand it. I'm a teenage girl. I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. And so it made it a lot easier being able to play that because they wrote it that way. And yeah, because they wrote it that way. I think you guys do a really great job. Thank you. With that and you especially because you are trying to be very hard men and part of that is also being very experienced. And then you have these yeah. looks and moments where the audience can read. I literally have no idea. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm glad that's pulling off. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us here, guys, from WonderCon Anaheim or Anaheim WonderCon 2017. If you're new, be sure to like, follow, subscribe to view more videos like these. Rock your inner geek with Geek Rock TV. Bye, guys.